Hey, welcome back guys to another video and in this video we're gonna talk about how to deploy a docker container to a digital ocean server using github actions so what we'll essentially be doing is whenever there is a merge to a branch that will trigger a build and then it will create a docker image and then deploy it to a digital ocean server so the things that you need before we get started is that you need a github account with admin access so that you can add secrets you need a digital ocean server and need an id like vs code so without any further ado let's get started so let's quickly take a look at the application that we have it's a very 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 basic node.js application where uh, we have used express as the backend framework for writing our server so here we just have one root route uh, which accepts the get method and returns a message called ready uh, nothing fancy just a simple thing uh, the main motive of this video is to show how to use github actions to deploy something like this i know that with your application it might need more dependencies but that would probably be covered in your docker file your github action will pretty much remain the same for the most part so now with the application out of the way let's try to look at the docker file and see what is in there so here is the docker file it's again uh, pretty basic so we start with the base image which is the node long-term service base image that we pull from docker hub we copy code from our root directory into the other root directory we run npm install to install the node packages that we need which is in this case express we expose 8000 port and then we run the command node server js which will basically run our express server on 8000 port so if we actually go ahead and build this docker image so we'll be able to build it on our local but what we need to really do is we need to build it in github actions and then we'll deploy the docker image into digital ocean now let's take a look at the github action which in this case will be our continuous deployment pipeline which then deploys to digital ocean server so we start with the name of the workflow which is deploy server and then we define on push to main we we have to run this workflow which is deploy to server uh, so we specify on push branches you can specify multiple branches here i've just specified main because that's the only branch in the repo and then we define a job uh, which is deploy to server it runs on ubuntu latest so this will be the os used to actually run the action and then execute all the steps that we have inside of the job so then we define the steps in this job which is deployed to server we first check out the code so whatever is there in the main branch will be checked out so it uses actions checkout v3 uh, which is which is pretty much the default that we use for checking out code in a github action uh, then we build the docker image so for that we use docker build hyphen t we tag it with demo server and there is one interesting thing which is adding a variable here so in a github action you can you can use a lot of you can use variables that are made available by github so uh, github.sha actually returns you the sha of the last commit that was done on this particular branch so in our case it will be the main branch so github.sha will return me the sha of the last commit which was there on the main branch since we checked out the code in the same directory as we are building the docker image we'll just pass in the current directory once the docker image is built we cannot directly pass it on to docker running in digital ocean and ask it to run we actually need to convert it into a tar so that it becomes transferable and then you can move it to the digital ocean server and there we can actually and then we can actually use docker load to load it in the docker engine running in the digital ocean server and then basically run it so we use the docker safe command to which we pass the image that we created followed by the name of the tar that we need so we'll just keep it demo server dot tar so we then ch mod uh, with certain permissions which gives read write access to the owner uh, for this particular demo hyphen server dot tar file and also read access to other users uh, we'll need this in order to copy this file from this runner into digital ocean server uh, then we use this action called apple boy scp action which will help us to scp this particular tar file into the into the digital ocean server to this particular action we need to pass the host name the username and an ssh key so we'll take a look at how do we create those and how does it work we'll also try to demonstrate it using a demo then we say that hey this is a source so we so whatever we create a demo server demo server dot tar 
we are giving it as a source and target is basically we are pasting it into the images folder inside of this host right which is our digital ocean server uh, after we paste it then we load the docker image inside of your docker engine which is running in the duo server so for this we need to ssh into the digital ocean server on on similar lines we use the apple boy ssh action and then we pass in the host username and key uh, and the script uh, which is basically we load we first load the demo server.tar into the docker engine we pass in the path of the tar file here to the docker load command then we remove any existing docker containers that might be running with the demo server name and then we do a docker run hyphen d which we run which basically means we are running it in detached mode hyphen p we expose the port 8000 and remember in the docker file we had exposed port 8000 so we are actually mapping the host port to the 8000 port on the docker container we give it a name called demo server and then we pass it the uh, image name which is demo server uh, followed by the github sha right so uh, why do we use a github sha right so imagine this scenario where to know whatever i have deployed to a particular instance maybe staging production or a development which commit is that taken from right that's where the tag that github.sha which we have tagged to the image comes in handy so we can look it up in our github history and say that hey this is where this is this is the code which is deployed or this is the commit till which we have taken an image of and then deployed to that respective instance oh now let's take a look at the github repo and let's try to add these secrets right so the host username and key so this particular action will try to look up these secrets in github actions so we need to head over to github actions and add these secrets so here we are in github so i have this repo called deploy with actions so here i have added three secrets host key and username so you can click on new repository secret you can pass in you can give it a name you can pass in the secret and then you can just say add secret right now remember that once you add a secret you cannot view it again you can only edit it or delete it but you can never view the secret again so make sure you are pasting in the right values for variables it is possible if you add a variable you will be able to see that variable right so anything that is sensitive goes inside of secrets and anything that is non-sensitive goes inside of variables right so suppose you are making a third party api call so that base api url might be a variable but the key that you use to make that api call to that third party will be a secret so for you to be able to add secrets and variables to actions you need to have admin access to a repository so now let's take a look at the digital ocean server where your docker container is running so this is my digital ocean droplet called yt droplet and this is where i've deployed the code that i showed you previously right and just to make sure that it works i'm just going to copy this address paste it in here followed by 8000 because that's where the server is running and if i hit i can see ready so this is the message that we return right on the root route so we know that the server is running now so this is the DigitalOcean server and if I do a docker ps I can see that you know this is the container followed by the image uh, and you know running on 8000 and it's exposing 8000 port and it's connect and it connects to the 8000 port inside of the docker container. So now let's try to add another endpoint in our document and also maybe change the existing endpoint and see how does that work. Let me add another route called uh, hello. And this is gonna return me world and I'm just gonna say ready and set right so now this is I've made some change in my code now if I do a push let me add this let me comment this uh, let me just say test save and now if I push, okay, there you go. And now, as you can see, th that has already triggered an action, right? So, so it shows the commit message that is test. And if I click on this, you can see that hey, it's deploying to server. So remember we pushed to the main branch, right? That's why this particular workflow was triggered. And we can also see that if this was the workflow file that trigger that was triggered, right? So we did an on push to main branch. We pushed it to main right now. That's why this uh, workflow was triggered. You can also look at the usage. 
uh, but let's go back here and see how does this actually work, right? So you set up the job, uh, it does something with Apple Boy Sage. You check out the code, you build a Docker image, you save the Docker image as a tar, and now it is actually copying the Docker image to droplet. Now if you take a look at the droplet, I can CD into images and I can LS. So this has successfully executed and it has done some cleanup. The job has been actually executed successfully. So just to make sure that, you know, whatever changes we made have been deployed successfully, let's try to hit this endpoint again. And yes, the message now has been changed from ready to ready and set. Now, now we also added another endpoint. So let's just also try that out. And yeah, so if we hit hello, it returns me world, right? So this verifies that whatever changes we made have been successfully deployed to the DigitalOcean server and a new container and the old container has been removed and a new container has been brought into its place. So now let's go back to the DigitalOcean server and take a look at what has happened there, right? So if I do a Docker PS now, what you can see is, hey, what you can see is the creation date has changed. So uh, the earlier one was created 21 hours ago. This has been created a minute ago. And then uh, you can also see that the SHA has changed, right? So this was 84F this is 76629. So, so imagine now if I'm in production and I'm looking at this Docker PS output, right? And I see demo.server followed by this particular thing. Uh, then I can take this, come back to GitHub and actually look at it, right? So if I click over here, this is going to give me that commit, right? So 7669E7F. Now let me try to pictorially represent what we have done in the uh, GitHub action, right? Because that is the meat. That's where that that's where most of the things happen. Step number one is that we check out code, right? So whatever is there on top of the main branch that gets checked out, that is step number one. In step number two, we actually we build a docker image right so build docker image once we build a docker image we cannot directly move it out so we do a tarball convert into a tarball once we have done that we then copy the tar to the digital ocean server and then we load the image in docker engine using the docker load command and then we run the docker container for building the docker image we use the docker build command for converting into a tarball we use a docker save command for copying the tar to the DigitalOcean server we use the apple boy scp action then for both of these we need to first ssh into the DigitalOcean server so for that we use the apple boy ssh server action after we have sshed into it we load the image in the docker engine so for that we use the docker load command and for running, we use the docker run command. So before we close off, let's take a look at this Apple boy SSH and the SCP action, which are pretty much the key for all of this workflow to actually run. So the Apple boy SCP action requires three things. It requires a host. It requires a host username and a key, right? So the key will be an SSH key. So here's a small guide on how do you do that? So first you need to create a key on, uh, on your local machine and then paste the public key into the authorized keys section inside of your DigitalOcean server. And then you need to copy the private key and paste it inside of your GitHub action secrets, right? So if you go back, so if you go back to the secrets, right? If you click on actions here, this, this is the private key that I've generated and the public key is inside of that authorized keys inside of my DigitalOcean server. So this is what we need for both the Apple boy SCP action and the Apple boy SSH action to work. So if you have found this video useful, please feel free to subscribe to this channel. More content is on the way. If you like the video, be sure to hit the like button and, and I'll see you guys in the next one.